Hello, hello everybody. This is Smashing Pumpkin coming at you guys with a video. I noticed that over this past weekend, Lithium uh, top aided or finished second, finished second in um, a remote duel challenge hosted by Konami. Importantly, he topped with Domain Monarchs, which is a very old deck. Uh, Pantheism was just recently unlimited to three. With that knowledge in hand, I decided to revisit a deck that I really enjoy, which is Fiend Stun, or Tribute Stun, which was a deck in 2014. One of my friends, Caleb Cosby, was a very big fan of the deck, and they did super well with it at an event. So I wanted to kind of reprise that deck and see if it had any modern applications. Um, so this is the deck, uh, there are a couple of contradictions in the deck, primarily is that you run a pendulum monster and you run domain, and you have no ways to get your pendulum monsters out of your extra deck, so, uh, once Sloth is in the extra deck, it does turn off domain, which is crazy, um, I think that Sloth is, like, a fundamental part of the deck. It's just another one of these, like, fiend monsters, so uh, it's much better than, like, an Archwood Christie or anything of that nature. So I think that it's worth running. The fact that it contradicts Domain is negligible. In 2018, I was testing this deck for uh, the 200th YCS in Columbus. Uh, ultimately, I decided not to play this deck. Um... Shocker. Pantheism was still at 1, which is a pretty big bummer because this card's absurd. Uh, and then also this deck ran a lot of Pendulum Monsters back then to support, like, um, getting Sloth out of the extra deck. Um, really, Domain is in this deck just as a thing to pitch to Pantheism. Most of the time you're Pantheism... You're Pantheism... Today, Junior! Most of the time, your Pantheism is going to grab you March, because March plus Vanny's Fiend or Sloth is much better than um, really anything else. Domain plus Majesty's Fiend is obviously really good, but Domain plus Vanny's Fiend doesn't do anything, and Domain plus Sloth doesn't really do anything either. So the rest of this deck is just ratios. So we are playing nine um, Floodgate Tribute Monsters. Uh, if you're not familiar with these cards, uh, Amorphage Sloth is basically a domain, uh, except for Amorphage Monsters, which, I, I mean, please name me an Amorphage Monster worth summoning. I'll wait. Uh, Vandy's Fiend and Majesty's Fiend both can't be special summoned, but Majesty's Fiend prevents your either player from activating monster effects, and Vandy's Fiend prevents them from special summoning. Uh, so Vandy's Fiend plus domain doesn't do anything, but Majesty's Fiend plus domain is insane. Uh, basically, most decks can't play, and then if you have a march up, then they really can't play because they can't really get rid of the fiend. Um, and then the last tribute monster is Erebus. Um, sometimes you need to grind. Uh, Erebus gets rid of anything, which is pretty cool. Um, from their hand side of the field or graveyard, it doesn't target. Uh, really just an absurd card. And the other part of the deck is Tribute Fodder. Uh, Fiend Sanctuary is an older card. Um, there are a couple of other cards you can play instead. You could play Red Lair. Uh, this deck doesn't play Return, so there isn't really any synergy between having a Tribute Monster. I mean, aside from uh, Domain, um, I guess that would probably make it worth running. Um, just to the off chance that you have to um, tribute one of these to play red layer to hopefully stop your opponent from doing anything. That's probably worth it. It would probably run um, some number of red layer for that reason then. Hold on. We can... Yeah, so initially I was playing King Sanctuary. This card is actually just a little bit better. Uh, more tribute fodder idea. This card is very good uh, until it gets veiled or impermanenced. And then you wonder why you're putting your deck or ashed. It can't get Ash Blossom too. Um, so I play one of it. I also play Rota to search it out. Uh, hopefully the Rota gets ashed. So then the play goes through. Um, 
I don't say I think it's much better because it only is soft to Valor and um, Impermanence, where this is softer to more hand traps. Uh, when this is normal summon or special summon, do you get an additional tribute? So, Idea gets out Eidos, and Eidos allows you to tribute summon for one of your big things. Uh, and then it also banishes, so it can be tribute fodder later. Mithra is cool. Uh, it's another. This dodges all the hand traps. Uh, Shade Brigadine allows you to um, just get another body on the board. This is also immune to all the cards, except for Red Reboot. This could get Red Rebooted. Imagine how silly that would be. Uh, Rhoda. Rhoda just gets Idea. Uh, I didn't want to play two Ideas, so uh, Rhoda just seemed like a good fit. And then Terraforming is also a Tribute Fighter because it can fetch Mausoleum of the Emperors. So Mausoleum reads, during your main phase, or during any main phase, the turn player can pay a thousand life points times the number of monsters normally needed for a tribute summon of a monster. Uh, max 2,000, so no god cards, I guess. And then that player can normal summon or set that card without tributes. It doesn't count as a tribute summon, so it won't get Erebus's effect. Uh, it's irrelevant. In this deck, you're just trying to get out your fiends, and you're uh, not really too concerned about anything else. Pantheism is busted. Um, easy. Domain is also busted. Uh, it's less good in this deck than in um, uh, Lithium's deck, but whatever. Uh, so then you play March. March protects your tribute zone monsters, but you can't special summon the extra deck, which doesn't matter. Uh, Stormforth is super good. It lets you break down boards so you can go second effectively sometimes. And then some one ofs, you play one of Escalation. This allows you to tribute someone during your opponent's turn. So if your opponent like has mind control or something stupid, you can tribute over in response and then you're safe. Uh, this rarely gets played, but I mean, it has a niche application on like uh, the other Monarch cards. And then Prime. Prime is good for grind games, that's about it. Um, yeah, you want to pitch it to Pantheism, but you don't really ever want to draw it. And the last are just consistency cards. You play two Desires. Um, your cards in your deck don't really matter. Uh, as long as you can play out your hand, like you should beat most of the combo decks. Um, and then Celestial Observatory is a very interesting card. Um, you can put a level 6 monster from your hand on the bottom of your deck and draw two. Uh, so it's basically like a level 6 um, version of Trade-In, and then Sloth, Fiend, and Sloth, Vandies, and Majesties are all um, level 6. This is level 5, so F. So yeah, this deck is basically just two-card Monty. You try and get a Fiend and a way to put it on the battlefield. Um, and these ratios I think are good. Uh, you play a lot of consistency cards, and then Pantheism helps you either get Domain or March down. Uh, there are some other considerations for this deck. You can play Foolish Burial of Goods, which is basically a Rota. I mean, it basically tutors for Domain or March, which is not bad, or you can put Prime in the graveyard. So that is Tributes done, or Fiends done, or whatever you want to call it, um, and I'm done. Bye.